Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal, and I am here with my good friend, Dave Souza, who is no doubt one of the most talented engineers that exists in the entire Overland industry. And Dave is gonna be sharing with us an exclusive on what I think is one of the most exciting new camper products and projects that we have seen in a very, very long time. And the reason for that is all about engineering and execution. And it's easy to get caught up in the glamour or the specs on certain things, whereas at the end of the day, we need things to work properly for the vehicle that they're fitted to. And this is one of the rare examples of when that has all come together into a single package. So we're gonna do a walk around here in the Turn Overland facility. This is their Skunk Works, and this is literally one of their Skunk Work projects. So thank you so much, David, for spending the time with us this morning and letting us get this first look at this truck. Yeah, well, thank you, Scott. <clears throat> I really appreciate the opportunity to show everybody this project. It's been under wraps and hidden now for 25 months, so it's just now getting ready to hit the road. We're gonna make a uh, delivery to our clients in a day or two. That's amazing. And I mean, this is literally the first six, sub 600 pound, fully enclosed four season camper that we have seen in the North American market. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it is really exciting. And there's a lot of details for us to cover. And we'll see that as we start our walk around now. And then later today, we're gonna get out on the trail and actually show you how this thing performs. We're gonna get dusty. We're gonna get dusty. I like that. I like that. So this prototype first article expedition build is based upon a 2019 TRD Tacoma. Now this is the extra cab model, which gives a couple benefits. It gives you increased payload over the four door, but more importantly for a camp camper fitment is to have a full six foot length bed. From the front of the vehicle, you can see that you have a tightly integrated bumper with some grill guard protection as well. We want to protect this radiator from animal strikes. We have a 9.5 worn winch up here as well. We've got some auxiliary lighting for good trail coverage. And then under the hood are a couple thoughtful modifications as well. So we have a 270 amp Singer alternator that's been fitted and it even has a full rebuild kit that goes with it. So it's also got fresh air coming in from behind the cowling. So instead of a full snorkel, this is a modified snorkel configuration where it pulls fresh air from the cowling, not directly from the air box and inside the fender well. On any Expedition Camper build, one of the most important considerations is suspension. And David and his team have spent a lot of time getting that just right. So this is a combination of Icon vehicle dynamics components and Fox components, including specially configured 
coils in the front to take the load of the winch and the bumper, and then fully custom rear leaf springs to accommodate for the weight of the flatbed and the camper as well. For the tire and wheel package, we have TRD Pro wheels, which are very strong and lightweight. And more importantly, they have great concentricity, so they require very little weight to balance. They're running a 235-85 Dick CPEC Extreme, which is a mud terrain. Now, the reason why you'd run a 235-85 is because that size, in general, is available around the world. So you do have good ground clearance, great performance out of it, and it also keeps the vehicle a little lower. And it also reduces the rotating, reciprocating mass as well. A little higher here, we have the Prinsu rack. <clears throat> now this rack does a nice job of filling the gap between the truck and the camper. It also gives a little bit of an airlift as well to reduce some of that direct airlift under the camper body. But then it also gives a nice spot to add additional max tracks, light recovery equipment, bags. A little lower here, we have a full set of weight bearing rock sliders. Now these are designed for rock crawling so if you did have a hard rock impact, it would protect the side of the vehicle. But more importantly, again, for travel, this is a jacking point, and it's also a significant amount of protection to the vehicle in the event of an accident. Now let's take a look at what's inside the cab. So again, this is an extra cab, so it does have plenty of space if you're only hauling around one or two people. They did some thoughtful things to reduce weight and to add some functionality to the truck inside here. That even starts from WeatherTech floor mats, some gauges, as additional gauges as well. David designed an ultralight aluminum tray that allows for some storage under the tray for longer items, and then la full lashing storage on top of the tray, which is also carpeted to reduce vibration and noise and insulate some of that. These lashing points, they incorporate a spring in the bot in this stainless steel body and a urethane bushing. And this is primarily to again keep the camper affixed to the tray bed, but also to handle high frequency vibrations. In this lower corner panel cabinet, we have a lot of systems. So we have access to the primary fuel tank and the auxiliary fuel tank, which comprises 35 gallons of unleaded on board. The auxiliary fuel tank is where you would put in questionable fuel. So it has a full filtration before it goes into the main tank. So you have filtration for particulates, and then you also have water separation as well. So now we're going to start talking about the camper. It is constructed from a fiber reinforced thermal plastic, and then it has these heavy reinforced metal corners to protect it. So even at 3 8 inch thick, it is very durable. And it also provides some additional insulation and R value, which is complemented by the insulating panels. We've also got some small ammo cans for exterior storage. They're also lockable as well. You can see the rub rails on the side of the tray, which helps to move tree branches away from the, the panels of the camper. And then we can also see this full length reinforced rear bumper. A little higher up, we have a Dobinson 4x4 bag awning. On this side of the camper, we've got the spare tire location. This location is designed to fit up to a 255-85. The width of the tire is adjusted with these Delring guides. It's strapped down in place. And if you need to get the spare tire out, you grab the entry ladder, you slide it into this accessory receiver point, you can unstrap the tire and roll it down the ladder. In this side locker, we have access to many of our electronic systems, and we also have a place to put the stove if we want to cook outside. So there's actually a propane port here that we can attach the stove to. And now, what you've all been waiting for, let's check out the inside of this camper. And while this camper looks very compact from the exterior, it's actually very roomy inside. So it has a six foot two nearly stand up height. And then it's configured with a galley at the rear and the sleeping and sitting configuration in the center and towards the front. And then the rear of the camper also has our catalytic heater, which only requires about 
600 BTU to keep this thing warm. It has a nice flat stainless steel preparation surface and then also an electronic control panel at the rear as well. In the center of the camper is the seating location for the two occupants. It also has a fridge for accessing cold drinks and food. And then there's a bed that's a full-size queen up towards the front of the camper. So I want to talk real quick about the dirt performance of this Aterra camper. Now, you would expect that it would perform a little different than a stock Tacoma, and it does, but in ways that I actually like. By adding the weight over the rear axle and by improving the suspension in the way that David and his team did, the vehicle actually feels a lot more neutral on the trail. This camper is actually revolutionary in a few ways. It's similar to what we've seen come out of Europe, but it is not very much like anything we've seen come out of North America. And that is an ultra light camper for a Tacoma. The Tacoma is a wonderful vehicle, but saddled by an 1100 pound payload. So that means you have to make the lightest camper possible, which is exactly what David and his team has done. So we now have a camper that is less than 600 pounds when it's fitted to the vehicle. So once you remove the bed and the rear seats and a lot of these other components, you've gained back some available payload. Now this vehicle is heavily modified for the owner that's purchasing it. It would not be the way that Dave would typically spec a Tacoma from the perspective that it starts to get much closer and even a slightly above gross vehicle weight. So we have to separate the modifications to the vehicle from the camper suitability to the Tacoma. This camper is exactly the kind of unit you would want to fit to a Tacoma because it is so light. And then you just want to go very light on the accessories and the additional components that you fit to make sure that the vehicle comes into gross vehicle weight. I also noticed that on the highway it has a great ride quality. Overall this camper does not feel like you've got a giant box on top of it. It actually feels sporty I would even say. The inside of the camper is intentionally austere. Dave decided that give the buyer exactly what they need which is full weather protection in four seasons. It also has sufficient water storage for weeks in the backcountry. It does askew some of the things that you would see in a typical camper that's built just for luxury, but it does focus on the things that you need to get into the middle of nowhere.